Good afternoon and welcome to the 87th United Cooperative Annual Meeting. I'd like to thank everyone who's taken the time to attend today and for those of you who view this online. It has been determined that a quorum is present, therefore I call this meeting to order. Secretary Robin Craig will read the notice of the meeting and the minutes of last year's meeting. Robin. Thank you, Howard. Official notice of annual meeting, April 18th, 2023 at 1 p.m. Watermark, Center Street, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Purpose, to review the Board of Directors and Management Report on the business year January 1, 2022 through December 31st, 2022, to present board election results and to transact such other business as may properly come before the annual meeting of its members. Cooperatively of years, Howard Bull, Chairman, Robin Craker, Secretary, David Kramer, second or treasurer. Minutes of the annual meeting from April 20th, 2022, uh, 86th annual meeting of the United Cooperatives called to order by Chair Chairman Howard Bull at 1 p.m. at the watermark in Beaver Dam. It was determined that a quorum was present. Secretary Robin Craker read the notice of the meeting and the minutes of last year's meeting. With no corrections, the minutes stood approved as read. Chairman Bull gave his report and introduced the board of directors. President Kramer presented the annual report of the balance sheet and statement of operations for 2021. President Kramer reported total sales of $1,105,056.17, a net margin of $69,398,096, total assets of $993,465,204, Patron equity, equities of $578,967,739 and cash return to members of $30,944,000. A motion came from the floor to approve the financial report. Motion carried. Gary Nolden gave the nomination committee report and announced the election results. Re-elected to the board were directors Brad Krieger, Dwayne Hinchley, and Howard Bull. Old business, none. New business, none. Chairman Bull made his closing remarks and know the meeting had been recorded and would be available for review via the website and YouTube. A motion and second came from the floor to adjourn the meeting. Motion carried. Okay, thank you, Robin. Does anyone have any additions or corrections to the minutes that were just read? Hearing none, the minutes will stand approved as read. At this time, I'll introduce the Board of Directors. Our Vice Chairman, Gary Nolden. Everybody's met our Secretary, Robin Craker. Brad Krieger, a director from Shawano. Dwayne Hinchley from Cambridge. Dwayne Talkin from Bonduel. Rob Lederman from Denmark. Jordan Cray from Waterloo. And Peter Nilsna from Hillsborough. At this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to our President and CEO, David Kramer for his report. Well, it's my pleasure to present a financial report this afternoon with several records. Both sales and profitability are new records for this company this year. Um, so, and it's a tremendous, tremendous year. So with that, we'll start with a balance sheet. Everyone should have got a copy of the annual report if you would like to follow along. Um, you can see our current assets there uh, for 22 compared to 21. Cash and cash equivalent, we have 57 million in cash this year versus 23 last year. Uh, we get our receivables net, uh, 20 million versus 22 million last year. Inventories, 507 million versus 439 million, so you can see the effects inflation has had on, on, on inventories. Increases in cost of grain, increases in all the commodities has driven that up. Plus, we have some additional products in place also for the spring. Margin account, 18 million versus about 14 million. Unrealized gain on forward contracts. This year we have none. Last year we had 1.4 million. Prepaid expenses, um, 39 million versus 53. You can see this one is down a little bit with interest rates rising. Some of our uh, suppliers had more lucrative. Uh, programs last year that for us to prepay product this year we took, didn't take advantage of that because it didn't cover the cost of our money. So that's why our uh, prepaid expenses are down s somewhat. Other current assets, uh, 30 million versus 3 million. 
This is cash, extra cash that was in the bank at the end of the year um, because of all the prepaids that came in at the end of the year with the company. So you got total current assets then of 673 million 947 versus uh, 5, 558 million 103 a year ago. So you got substantially investments and in other assets. Uh, we can see our investments. 202 million versus 217 million. Primarily, a lot of this is, is investments in, in the ethno businesses that we're involved in, and those are being depreciated out over a period of time. Plus, we've had some investments redeemed by some of our regional cooperatives this past year, so that's why that's a little less. Other assets, uh, you can see a 5.1 million versus 6.4. Uh, total investments in other assets are 207 million 478 versus 223 million 510. Property and equipment, you can see is uh, 488 million versus 444 million a year ago. We've had some building projects going on, some additions in, in property and equipment for the year. Our accumulated depreciation is 251 million versus 232 million. So that leaves us with net property and equipment or depreciated value of property and equipment of 235 million versus uh, 211 million 761,000 a year ago. Total assets then are one billion, one hundred sixteen million eight hundred one thousand seven hundred fifty-three dollars versus nine hundred ninety-three million four sixty-five two hundred four. As you can see, a substantial increase there. Current liabilities are notes payable. Ooh, zero. <laughs> yeah, note, zero note payable. Last year we had 50, 50 million there, which is, which is a positive thing. Our current maturity of long-term debt. 13.7 versus 8.8. .8. Uh, we have two long-term notes that are, that are uh, one is for our, our purchase of a plant in, in Michigan and one is for the building projects that are going on currently. We lock the interest rate in for 10-year terms before this interest rate, rate rose. So we got very favorable terms there for the next 10 years. Accounts payable, this commodity pricing, you can see uh, 83 million versus 32 million. There again, commodity pricing is driving that up. Plus, like, like I said earlier, there was some um, prepays that were delayed, deferred out till spring that are showing up as, as payables. So, grain payables, 96 million versus 74 million. There again, uh, this is at the end of the year. A lot of this was paid out uh, the first few days of January. A lot of the farmers were, were deferring their income to get it into 23. Some of them had some very good years last year also. Uh, Unrealized gain or loss of Ford contract, we got $345,000 gain there. Last year we had nothing. Uh, accrued expenses, $15 million five versus $12 million five. Taxes payable, $2.3 million versus $7.3 million a year ago approximately. Pampage refunds payable in cash, $31,788,000. We paid out here in, in the first several weeks of May. Last year was $9,216,000 thousand dollars. Patron prepayments and credit balances, uh, 159 million 621 versus 130 million 642. When you look at that, that really t uh, tells the tale of what our, what our members, how, how much trust they put in, in, in the cooperative and coming in and prepaying and obviously they're getting a small discount for that, but it really is really great to see that we have a lot of members that are really can rely on us rely on them also. Then we have other 4.4 million versus 4.7 million. So total current liabilities are 407 million 796 versus 330 million 225. Then we get into our long-term liabilities. Uh, we have a long-term debt less the current mat current maturity above uh, 74.5 million versus 81.1 million a year ago. So you can see that's down from what it was a year ago. Those are those two long-term notes, long notes I spoke about earlier. Then we got remediation payables, uh, 396,000 versus 965,000 as we are cleaning up some of these sites that have some, some uh, remediation needs. You can see that we're getting caught up in, in that number goes down every year. Deferred income tax, uh, 779,000 versus 2,168,000. Uh, total long-term liabilities then are 75 million 755 versus 84 million 2672. Total liabilities uh, 
in our $483 million versus $414 million. Um, patron, e patron equities, preferred equities, or our preferred stock, you can see is $196 million, 719 versus $194 million, 168. So very comparable to what it was a year ago. This last year, uh, the rate went from 3.5% uh, dividend to a 5% dividend following the cost of money moving up. So, so that's a very positive for our members and also for the, for the company. Equity credits, $130 million versus $131.8 million. Patronage refunds payable in equity, $31 million, versus $13,824,000. And you might want to might wonder why uh, the patron equities and the, and the cash are the same this year. We're changing the way we're paying patronage. We're going to pay 50% out in cash. Last year was 40% in cash and 60% in equity. This year it's 50-50, so, which is a very positive thing for, for our members. Our general reserve was going from uh, from 239 a year ago to 274 million this year, so a nice improvement in our general reserve also. Total patron equities then go uh, from uh, 576 up to 633, which is a large increase in patron equities. Total liability in equities then are 1 billion 116 million 801,000 versus 993 million 465. So you can see our uh, assets and our liabilities balance, so we do have a balance sheet at this point. If you go to the next page, you can see our assets based on, on size. You can see our four largest categories there. Our, uh, our inventories is 45.47%. Then you go into property and equipment is 21.08%. Uh, uh, in investments is a, is a second, there's the third largest at 18.12%, and our kind of the third, fourth largest is cash, 5.11%. So, if you drop over and you look at our assets, so you can see what our assets have done in the last five years, they continue to grow. Um, we were 993 million a year ago, this year we were 1 billion, 116 million, 800,000, up 123 million from last year. So, all time high. Patron equities, if you look at that, it's a five year history there, what, what's happened there. You see our patron equities are uh, 633 million versus 578 a year ago, up 54 million from last year. Liabilities and patron equities, you can see our breakdown there. Patron equities are 56.7% of the pie. Long term liabilities are 6.78, and current liabilities are 36.52. On the bottom of the page, you can see a rendering of our new feed operations that's being being constructed in Waupon, Wisconsin. Um, both of the slip floors are, are complete. Uh, we'll be starting on the, on the warehousing here probably by the next several months. So, And the, we have a grain elevator going up in conjunction with that. They're actually pouring cement every day on that. And we'll see some bends going up in the, in the air pretty quick there. The foundations are done on, on one and the second one is being completed. So, so exciting, exciting things happening. Statement of operations is the next page. And here you can see our sales of, uh, of uh, 1 billion 458 million six hundred and sixty six thousand five hundred forty four dollars forty five dollars excuse me versus 1 billion 105 million fifty six thousand up three hundred and fifty four million dollars from last year. Very very nice increase there. Our overall gross margins, 188 million versus 142 million, up 44 million from last year. We get into our operating expenses in the merchandising category. You can see salaries and wages, and then you've got less wage reimbursements. The wage reimbursements come from our ethanol plants. That we're, their employees are under our payroll system, and then we're reimbursed by those, those plants, so that reduces our overall cost. So if you net those two out, you can see our over salaries and wages for the company are 42 million 925 compared to 38 million 314 a year ago up about 4.6 million dollars or about 12 percent i think everybody knows what's been going on with the labor market so we've actually had raises two times a year for the last couple of years so it's raised us about 12 percent at this point and i think we're still not done we're seeing it slow up a little bit but we still have a lot of transitioning going on with employees so 
a lot of opportunities out there for people to make a little more money and, and they seem to like to move around more than what we did when I was young. Some of the rest of us were younger. So, uh, Payroll taxes, you can see our uh, 2.7 million versus 2.5 million. Pension expense, uh, 1.2 versus about 1, 1, 1 million. Employee insurance, 4.6 versus 4.4. I think everybody knows what's going on with employee insurance. It doesn't get any cheaper. None of our insurance is getting any cheaper. So, uh, Vehicle expense, 11.4 versus 8.5, up $2.9 million. We have to move a lot of these extra products. We've got more vehicles on the road. And there again, uh, fuel and repairs are not getting any cheaper. So, Supplies and licenses. One million, almost 1.3 million versus 1.3, very comparable. Utilities, 2.7 versus 2.6. There again, utilities are up slightly from a year ago. Repair and maintenance, 3 million versus 2.7 million. There again, like I said, you, you run a truck in a shop and you don't get out of there with less than a thousand dollar bill. We have three, three shops, full-time shops, that we try to do a lot, do a lot of our maintenance work in-house. And we have uh, several part-time shops also, so we still have to run trucks into some of the major truck shops to keep them running. So, advertising, 288,000 versus 214,000. Uh, merchandising fees, there's zero at 31,000 last year. Obviously, that merchandising fee was associated to our Ponderosa restaurants, which we do not own anymore. So, corn dryer expense. Uh, 2,724 versus 2,378. There again, uh, quite, quite a large crop last year that came in, and so we had drying costs plus the ca cost of gas and electricity also went up slightly. So, bean roasting expense uh, is 59 million versus 34 million. Employee training and travel, 41 million versus 44, 45 million, about the same. Contract personnel, 242,000 versus 228,000. There again, we have some contract salespeople that are contracted through, through several of the regionals. Miscellaneous expense, we've got a credit there of 281000 versus 276000 Some of this is first for, for some of the soils, soils work and some of the other things that we do. They're shown as a credit there. So our total merchandising expenses are $73 million. 5.01 percent of sales versus 64 million, or 5.8 percent of sales. So, so down about eight tenths of a percent. But actual dollars are up. Total administrative expenses: uh, 1.4 million versus 1.4 million. Uh, 10 basis points versus 13 basis points. Then we get into our general expenses: depreciation, amortization, uh, 41 million 177 thousand versus 40 million 562 thousand a year before. Insurance, uh, two million one, almost two point two versus about two point two. So and this year's insurance will be up. Our insurance premiums went up about five hundred thousand dollars for the company when it was renewed here at the beginning of the year. So property taxes, uh, about two million dollars versus two million both years. Education, rent, and miscellaneous, eight hundred ninety-three thousand versus eight hundred fifty-eight thousand. So we've got total general expenses then of forty-seven million two hundred eighteen thousand versus forty-six million five hundred seventy-eight thousand. Three point two four percent versus four point two two percent, almost one full percentage point down. Interest and other expenses. We've got the um, gain on removal of property and equipment. We've got a gain there of. 1,836 versus a year before we had a gain of 3.3 uh, million. We've had uh, it's a difference of 1.5 million. There was uh, a few C stores that were sold more the prior year than last year, so that changed to gain. We've had several auctions that have worked out very well for us for excess equipment in the organization. That generated close to uh, 750,000 of cash from equipment that was not being utilized 100%. Finance charges income, $216,000 versus $288,000. Uh, purchase discounts, $1,167,000 versus $947,000. Other revenue is uh, $3,188,000 versus $2,305,000, up uh, $900,000. Interest expense, $4.5 versus uh, 2.9 up 1.6 million. 
obviously we have, have some additional borrowed money and also the interest rates on, on our seasonal money have went up. Yes, you're all aware of what's going on there. Collection and other expenses, uh, 956000 versus 76 It's a difference of $6.6 million. We had a, a vendor that had filed bankruptcy on us, and that's got, got cleaned up. So um, next year, that will be down to almost nothing again. So total interest and other expenses for the income bracket. We actually have an income there of uh, $1,008,000. Last year, we had, a, had an expense of $3.6 million. So it's a turnaround of $4.6 million from one year to the next. So our overall operating expenses then were 120 million 657 versus 115 million 771. 8.28 percent of sales versus 10.48, so we're actually down two tenths of one percent, but it's still about five million dollars more in operating expenses. So we felt, you know, with everything that was going on, that we were, we were very fortunate to hold the line as well as we did. The local net margin then is uh, 65 million. 834 versus 26 million 579. So that's an increase of 39 million dollars from local net margin. And that's the margin that's generated by the cooperative on all of our feed, grain, and agronomy and energy businesses. Then we get down, we talk about income from affiliates. This is income generated by our ethanol assets. We have ownership in three plants. Uh, this year was 42 million 754 versus 42 million 521 a year ago. So you can see. Uh, substantial amount of income coming in from the ethanol plants the last two years have been very, very good years in the ethanol industry. Patrick's refunds received five point, almost 5.8 million versus 4.6, up over a million dollars from a year ago. So you have net margins before income tax of 114 million versus 73 million 703 a year ago. You have income tax of seven point, almost 7.7 .7 versus 4.3, Pay a little bit more income tax this year than we did in the past. And we have net margins of 106 million 697 versus 69 million 398. 37 million dollars of positive growth in net margins from one year to the next. Our patronage rate for the farm supplies this year will be 8.25 percent patronage rate. 50 percent of that will be paid in cash. Our grain will be eight cents a bushel for all bushels purchased. That, that includes corn, beans, wheat, anything, and oats. Uh, and then drying and storage, will we will pay, be paying a 10% uh, uh, dividend on that also. The battery, I should say, on that. So, so there should be some really nice checks going out to the country in the next couple weeks. So the next page has got our pie chart of our total sales. You can see with the breakdown of the sales, you can see that the biggest one is the grain and trucking, which is almost 50%, 49.41% of our sales were in grain and trucking. Agronomy would be second, with 23.43% of our sales coming from that division. Feed division is third, with 21.06. Then our energy division is fourth, with uh, about 6% of our business energy division. And you can see there's a small sl sliver in there for retail. We have uh, several hardware stores that are in that retail side. The energy, the C stores are also in the, in the energy side. So There's also, there's a picture in the corner, upper corner there, and you can see this is a site that we're working on in Center Valley. Uh, this is an agronomy and grain and fertilizer site. This is a 40 acres of, this is a 40 acre site. We're working through getting permits, we're getting, we're getting closer, we're dealing with some wetland issues with the DNR, but we'll be putting rail in there and and, and building some grain, a grain elevator there and an 8,100 ton fertilizer plant, plus a liquid plant with liquid storage and a 24,000 uh, cubic foot warehouse. And we got office, offices there with a small shop in it, so it's, it's a full service site. This site is, is about 10 miles north of our Greenville location. And the reason we're moving that way is Greenville is right in a very growing community and, and all the assets are very, very, very tired there. And we're going to have rail access at this site, and this rail will be tied, will tie back into our our ethanol industry and also other rail terminals. So, so it should be a real positive uh, thing when we get it done. But like I said, it takes time. We've been working on this for three years now. Before that, we were looking for a site up in that area for probably about three or four years before that, and it's probably going to be another year before this thing is fully operational. 
year, year and a half. So then we start talking about volume. The first is, is feed volume, and this is tons of concentrate. And you can see there's a five-year history there. You can see our concentrate went from 374 to 416,000 tons, or an increase of 41,574 tons for the year. Across the page is the grain volumes. This is in bushels, millions of bushels. You can see the year ago was 74.2 million bushels. This year was 78.2 million bushels. Four million bushels more handled this year than last year. Hello is our fertilizer volumes. This is in tons. Uh, you can see that one went down a little bit. We are 347,000 tons a year ago. This last year we were 309,000 tons, down 38,000 tons. There's some reasons for that. The year before we had a tremendously big, big fall as the fertilizer prices were very competitive and the prices started rising after that. Uh, so there was uh, lower usage. Uh, some people were mining some of the potash and that last year we didn't sell them nearly as amount of, amount of potash as we did the year before because the price was high. And, and uh, this year again we're in the process of this is coming into the spring and it appears like the potash prices have dropped back down and, and we have a lot of stuff sold to go on the ground in the next 30 days, hopefully. So, and we have our fuel volume. You can see our fuel volume is, is up just slightly. We're at 26 million gallons. These are in millions of gallons versus uh, 27.01 million gallons this year. Up about a million gallons in fuel. And considering that we sold, probably we sold six sea stores in the last two years, that's Pretty remarkable that our gallons are holding. So our, our energy division is doing a good job with uh, getting out and, and, and getting new, new customers um, of our tank wagons. And we just have two brand new tank wagons that have are put in put into service in the last 30 days. Uh, uh, so if you see those around, you'll be some nice new shiny refined fuel trucks. One in this area and, and uh, one to the north. So if you flip the page, you can see our annual report. It's got some other uh, charts in there, some graphs. You can see that it's a net income for the last total five years. You can see the <coughs> big jump for net income for 2022 versus 2021, and 2021 was a, a very respectable year. So, and we have our annual sales, and you can see there our annual sales shows the, the big growth that we had in the sales of $354 million of growth from last year to this year. <laughs> return on equity. You can see our return on equity is last year was almost 12 percent. This year is is uh, 16, almost 17 percent return on equity. So there's not too many places where you can invest money and get a 17 percent return on equity. I don't think. And cash return to our members. You can see last year we returned 30, 30 million 944. This year will be will be 55 million. Four thirty-one. This also this includes our patronage refunds and our stock revolvement and our preferred <coughs> stock dividends. Our preferred stock dividends this year were, were over ten million dollars that were paid out at the end of the year to our preferred stockholders. So what happens to an average hundred hundred dollar sale? And you can see uh, this past year has went up. It's uh, Local net from $100, $4.5 was profit versus $240 a year ago. Income from affiliates was $2.94. This year, last year was $385. So you can see we, we, our company, the United Cooperative portion of our company, did, did remarkably well this past year. So, and as I started to say earlier, is you know this year has been a, a year of building. You know we've got a lot of building projects going on. Uh, got a project, a big project going on in Boscoville that's going to be completed here by July. That will be, we'll be loading 100 car unit trains down there. Uh, when that project is complete, we're putting a million bushels of storage. Four 250,000 bushel bins will be loading rail cars at 60,000 bushels an hour when that's completed. So we'll be able to load a 100 car train in, in about uh, eight, nine hours. And then we're handling, hand, they'll be handed off to the, the SNFS uh, and, the, and the grain can move to the Northwest to the ports up there, or it can move to Hereford. It can move into Texas to Hereford, Texas, or it can move into Mexico. So that'll open up a lot of markets. It's going to change the overall flow of grain in the whole south, southwestern Wisconsin. So it should be very, very positive for, for this company. And then a lot of our our plants will be 
delivering rate, and there will be an unload 25 car unit trains into that plant and then reload to 100 car trains at the site. Plus, a lot of truck elevators will be, be delivering into that plant. So, we're looking for some big things there. We'll probably anticipate we're probably going to move 25 to 30 million bushels of grain through that facility on an annual basis uh, if the markets continue to stay like they are. And we talked about the Mopan site. Our Mopan site is uh, in the progress. It's supposed to be completed um, May of June of May or June of 2024. Uh, all the slip forming is done. Uh, the grain elevators are, are, are going up. Uh, we're also hoping that we can have at least some of that grain elevator system ready for fall harvest that we can take some corn into the Bopon area so we have corn on site when we open the open the feed mill up in uh, uh, 24. We're also working on a, a soy processing facility uh, that we're in, in the planning stages with that. If, if that gets approved this summer, that will be about a 16 month period before that's completed. Then we've got uh, a new fertilizer addition going on at Deerfield. We've got 2,600 ton of storage going on at Deerfield right now that's in, being constructed. It took us a while to get our permits through Dane County. I think we dealt with them since last January, or last July. So. And obviously, we talked about the Greenville location. We've been dealing on the permitting process there for well over a year there already, and we're probably another four to five months before we get to the get to the approval so we can start turning turning dirt. Um, we're going to have a rail at the Lapon site. We'll have rail at the Center Valley site, and we had some additional rail put in at Oshkosh, and, and we also finally got our our. Um, or ADM got their lawsuit settled uh, with Rep and South that we do own that whole property there now. So we're looking there's uh, was three bends that were rebuilt that were destroyed with, with a storm a couple years ago. We got another bend, another 90 foot bend going up, and then we got a 1.3 million bushel bend scheduled to go up there with a new new dryer set up, and and we'll be adding additional tracks there in the future. So we've got a lot of a lot of things going on. I think right now we have five. I know we have five 1.3 million bushel bins that have been paid for and under contract to be built within the last, hopefully within the, would have been the next 12 months, but it's probably going to be the next 18 months that they get built. So this next year will be equally, I know it will be equally as busy. Uh, one of the things we should talk about, we talked about labor. We do have, uh, last year we tried, brought in some H2A workers. These were uh, we fellows coming out of South Africa to work for us from Brought them kind of here in September. They worked till, till Christmas, right after Christmas, went back. Uh, we expanded that program this year. Right now we have uh, 17 of them here today that are working, spread across into five different locations. And we got, I think, three more flying in today that are picking up in Milwaukee this afternoon, and we got three or four more to come in after that. So we'll have about, uh, we hope to have about 20, 21 to 22 of those um, employees working for us in the spring in the agronomy facilities and in the fall in our grain elevators. So, so, so with that, that is my report. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask for a motion and a second to approve the financial report. So moved. Second. 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 Motion seconded and approved. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. I'd like to thank Dave, his staff, and all the employees at the United Cooperative for making this another outstanding year. At this time, I'll report on the nominating committee. We had three members on the nominating committee representing three directors that were up for re-election. They were John Stevenson, Paul Schweiger, and Dean Duckert. Uh, they met, had several nominees, and were unsuccessful at procuring anybody to run. So congratulations on our three directors that were re-elected. At this time, is there any old business to be brought before this meeting? Any old business at all? Hearing none, is there any new business? Hearing none, we'll move on. Once again, I'd like to thank our president and CEO, David Kramer, all our VPs, branch managers, and employees of United Cooperative, our cooperative members, and last but not least, our board of directors. Without any one of these, uh, none of this would be possible. It all 
comes down to support, and we're here to um, support all our membership. So with that, could I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you once again for attending or viewing this online. Have a good day.